This week, um, I have been talking to you about uh, playing the harmonica and all, and I was hoping that my son, Jonathan, that I've been trying to get to the church for a long time to play, but he's busy with his church in Atlanta. Um, I was hoping he and I could play together, but we couldn't work it out. So um, he's going to sing a special song uh, today, and so I'm going to turn it over to him and let him um, sing, and then I'll bring the message today. I know you'll enjoy the song. start the message this morning I want to uh, remind you stay on uh, text message group uh, keep let us keep, keep us up with what's going on this is the way that we as a church body can keep up with each other if you got uh, prayer requests or things that are going on that you need us to pray about put it in the group text so that everybody can read it and we can be uh, thinking about each other let's remember Paulette Edwards she'll be having a procedure done uh, a week from this Monday, 
So don't forget about Paulette and also George Tuttle. Uh, George uh, and Terry will be going to uh, have some more tests done. Uh, um, so let's be lifting them up in prayer too. Um, there are a lot of different people. I'd like to mention uh, a friend of mine that I grew up with, um, Michael Elliott. He's a pastor uh, uh, over at Tybee. Um, and uh, he has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and certainly want to be praying for him that God will touch him and bring healing to him. So let's uh, remember that. We have a lot of others. Uh, many of us know the names of different ones. So let's remember our list of uh, um, people in, uh, on our prayer list. And also remember Bernadine, uh, her dad and her sister. Uh, they have brought Mr. Zipper home. Um, he's under hospice care and they're, they, they've got him here taking care of him and trying to make him comfortable. So please be praying for them as they go through a tough time uh, taking care of their father. So remember all of that and um, we're um, into our fourth Sunday. Um, I, I have to say this has been an experience for me and I'm sure for you too. It, have you ever heard the story of uh, Alexander and the horrible, terrible, not so good, very bad day? Um, if you hadn't heard the story, let me tell you a little bit about what the story is about. Alexander was a boy about seven or eight years old. He had one of those days when everything went wrong. Disaster after disaster, nothing went right. It was a horrible, terrible, not good, very bad day for, for Alexander. For instance, when Alexander woke up in the morning, he discovered that he had gone to bed with gum in his mouth and when he woke, it was in his hair. When he got out of the bed, he tripped over a skateboard and then he dropped his sweater into the sink where the water was running. He said, I just knew it was going to be a horrible, terrible, not so good day. And then he went to school and it turned out to be a horrible day at school. After school, he had a terrible experience at the dentist office. Then he came home for supper and he said, we had cauliflower for supper. I hate cauliflower. And on uh, TV, all I saw was hugging and kissing, and I hate hugging and kissing. Then my bath water was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. I lost my marble down the drain. And when I went to bed, Nick uh, took back the pillow that he had promised me that I could have. And my Star Trek nightlight had burned out. I bit my tongue and the cat decided to sleep with Nick and not with me. All in all, he said, it was a horrible, terrible, not so good, bad day. Now, is it any wonder when Alexander finally came to the end of the day, he heaved a sigh and he cried, I think I'll just run away. I guess sometimes we all feel that way sometime or another. I'm sure you have, I have. Almost all of us have had days of anxiety and stress and frayed nerves, and we need to learn how to deal with that. And as I read the scriptures, I find uh, that there's no instant formula uh, for spiritual maturity. A lot of people are searching for one. They just want to have an experience or say a prayer and have an instant spiritual maturity. But it doesn't come that way. Growth and maturity comes through stress and through strain and through struggle as we endeavor to live our Christian life. And we need to remember that. A few years ago, Thomas Hobbes of the University of Washington and some fellow scholars uh, sociologist um, published a research on human stress. Uh, they listed many of the common experiences of life, evaluated their impacts on our mental and emotional well-being, and rated them according to stress they produced in our life. The stress rating was expressed in what they call life change units, or LCUS. 
the worst stress rating, um, the higher the LCUS. For instance, getting a divorce was rated at a 73 LCUS. Being pregnant was a 40 LCUS. Remodeling your home was a 25 LCUS. The stress of Christian uh, of Christmas was rated as a 13 LCUS. And on and on uh, their uh, formula went, each one uh, rated in LCUS. When we learned of a friend, maybe our own age, who is dying of cancer, or when we go to the doctor and he tells us that there's some questionable things in an x-ray or when our children grow up uh, moreover or we sell our home or move someplace else or we change jobs or we retire. These are all LCUSs. We are constantly being bombarded by LCUS. And the conclusion of the research was if within one year's time we experience a, uh, a, a cumulative total of more than 300 life change units, most people won't be able to handle it. They concluded if we, if we experience these things, most of us will have either a physical or a mental or emotional breakdown. Because humanly speaking, we just can't cope with that much change. But notice that I said humanly speaking. And I emphasize the word humanly because our trust in God can make all the difference in how we are able to handle the things that may happen to us in life. Now with that in mind, turn with me to Psalms 46. There must have been times when the writer of Psalms felt like he was in a pressure cooker and couldn't get out. So he wrote the words of Psalms as he sought to deal with the stresses of his life. Listen to the first verse. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. The Hebrew word for trouble means pressed in. Do you remember the old saying, between a rock and a hard place? Well, that's the kind of pressure the psalmist is talking about here in Psalms 46. When you are between a rock and a hard place, then turn to Psalms because it ministers to us in the most amazing way. When Martin Luther was surrounded by enemies, he read this Psalms and then he wrote the great hymn, a mighty fortress is our God. He saw the tremendous power of God as a bulk word never ending or never failing. Regardless of what happens in the world, there is still strength and power and might there of God. Let me give you a brief overview of Psalms 46. Then we'll look at a little more detail. There are three sections in this Psalms here. Verses one through three deals with the change in nature. The psalmist says, I will not fear. God is my refuge and my strength and ever thought uh, the world around me may be shaking, I will fear not. And then verses four through seven speaks of changes taking place in society. The psalmist says, I will not be moved. Even though nations are falling apart, even though society is deteriorating because God is my refuge and strength and I will not be moved. And finally, in the last verses, 8 through 11, it's, that it's almost as if the psalmist sits back after everything he has seen in society and in nature. And he says, I will will not let stress ruin my life anymore. I'm going to relax. I'm going to change gears. I'm going to trust God and get on with living in according with his will for me. 
So let's look at verses 1 through 3. I will not fear. God is our refuge and strength, our everlasting present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way to the mountains, uh, uh, or the mountains fall into the uh, heart of the sea, though its water roars and, fo and foams, the mountains quake with their surging. It's all, it almost sounds as if the psalmist was familiar with the headlines in our modern day society, don't it? Think about that. Worrisome things are happening in our world today. During the past 20 years, earthquakes and tsunamis have increased in, at a phenomenal rate. Geologists point to the San Andreas Fault and predict that one day a large chunk of Western California is going to fall off into the Pacific Ocean. They say that the Pacific Rim volcanoes are ripe for a major eruption. And what about the hurricanes that lash out on our coast? The tornadoes that sweep across our state? The blizzards that paralyze our cities? The drought that uh, shrivels up and cracks our farmland? And the floods that wash away bridges and homes? Some are being beginning to cry out. What's happening in our world today? But as Christians, how should we react to these things? And the psalmist says, I will not be afraid. My Lord is still in command of the winds and the waves and the seas and all of the elements of nature. Therefore, I will not fear. God is my refuge and my strength. In verses 4 through 7, it talks about not being moved. It says, There is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. See, here's a picture of a nation in an uproar. Kingdoms are falling from great changes are, are taking place. And it sounds like today, if you listen to it, it sounds like he's talking about today. For some of us who are a bit older, it's hard to read the passages without thinking about Elvis Presley. He started out making $14 a day as a truck driver, and, and on a fluke, he made a recording that caught the ear of a promoter. The next thing you know, he was the highest paid entertainer in the world. And when Elvis Presley died, the airlines were clogged with people trying to get to Memphis, Tennessee. Five tons of flowers were sent to his funeral. People lined up on the streets just to catch a glimpse of his coffin. Elvis Presley once said, I'd give a million dollars for one week of peace. He recorded a song that probably described his life. It was called All Shook Up. I'm all shook up, he said. Our world's nations are in an uproar. Mankind seems to be falling apart. But we as Christians don't have to be in an uproar. And we don't have to be falling apart. We can stand steadfast because God is our refuge and God is our strength because Jesus is King of King and Lords of Lords. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as Christians, we can stand strong in the faith that we have in Jesus, who is our Lord. The third thing is, is in verses 8 and 9, it talks about being filled with not being filled with stress anymore. It seems that the psalmist sits back and he looks at the changes that have taken place and he reflects on them. He says, Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on earth. He makes war cease to the, to the ends of the earth and he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Then in verses 10 and 11, he says, 
be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Do you realize what David is saying here? He's saying in the midst of it all, I have, I've made a decision. I will no longer let my life be filled with stress and anxiety. Why? Because God is my refuge and God is my strength. I wonder if we have forgotten how to relax. How long has it been since any of us have sat down with our family and ate a meal together? And then after the meal, just sat and visited and talked and had fun. How long has it been since you took a long walk in the evening and watched the sunset or sat in a hot tub of water and read a chapter, a full chapter of a book uninterrupted? How long has it been since you just leaned back and relaxed? Listen to some good, wholesome music. How long has it been? How long has it been since you just spent a day and got away from it all? You took your watch off. You turned your cell phone off. You forgot what time it was. To be still and know that I am God. I think God is trying to tell us we need to slow down and recognize who's in charge. Now let me close by pointing out three truths that we can draw from this psalm today. Three great truths we can draw from Psalms 46. First of all, God is always near and available. We need to remember that. God never puts us on hold. We may be on hold on the telephone or we may be on hold at a red light or on hold at the bank uh, uh, drive through or on hold at the post office line or on hold at the supermarket. But God is always available and anxious to hear whatever we want to speak to him about. Some of our problems may be superficial, but others are deep and God can help us through that. So during this time of being separated from each other, talk with him. Listen to him through his word and learn from him. Number two, God's power is greater than anything in all this world. You hear me? God's power is greater than anything in this world, greater than winds and storms or earthquakes or vol volcanoes. There is no greater power. God's power is sufficient to win the victory over the enemies that come our way. The psalmist tells us, God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. So don't be afraid to ask God for help. And finally, number three, God's help works even when we can't help ourselves. Have you felt weak lately? Have you felt like there are too much, too much stress in this life right now? Too many LCUSs in your life? And you're about ready to explode? God, God's help is available, folks. And all you have to do is to reach out for it and grab hold of it. If you're at home this morning without him as your Lord and Savior, please realize this. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to accept his love, receive his forgiveness, and becoming part of his family. Take this time in your life to spend some quality time with God. I really think he's trying to establish a personal relationship with you and with me. Don't pass up the opportunity.
to have that personal relationship with God. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for trying to help us to understand that we need to slow down and we need to recognize you as our Lord and Savior, recognize you uh, as our help, our everlasting Lord. Lord, give us strength in this time. Help us, Lord, while we are alone to, to build a personal relationship with you and know you um, deeply. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for the opportunity we've been able to hear your word. We're grateful. Now, Lord, uh, be with us, walk with us, guide our steps. Help us, Lord, in whatever we face, know that you're there walking with us. In Jesus' name, amen.